Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter F, and that means we're going to be looking at flint, or, in a broader sense, stone tool technology. Now, stone tool technology has been our primary medium for technology for 97% of our time on this planet. Two million years ago, Homo habilis, or the handyman, was making simple stone tools in Oldermai Gorge in East Africa. They may look primitive and simple, but they are the beginnings of a great legacy. Between 200 and 50,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were thriving in Europe, and they developed their own stone tool technology, the Lavalois or Mousterian pressure flaking technique, and the study of it has actually formed much of the vocabulary and uh, developed our understanding about the complexity of stone tools. And it is the great legacy of stone tool technology which we try to keep alive here at Arco Soup Towers, with mixed results, it might be said. Now, Homo sapiens, that's the latest form of human being, um, have a stone tool legacy which can broadly be subdivided into three distinct periods. The Upper Paleolithic, or Old Stone Age, covers a huge swathe of time, from about 50,000 to 12,000 years ago, and throughout this time people were living in very difficult conditions. Here, for example, is a mammoth bone hut in the middle of the Ice Age. In this time, food was often scarce, and when it did turn up, it was often migrating. So animals like the caribou, the Canadian goose, and the seal were seen as opportunities not to be missed by Paleolithic man. In response to this, we developed a very specific series of tools to predate certain animals. Each tool was very carefully worked on, and each one was a work of art in its own right. In this way, we could predict migratory patterns and be ready at every specific time of the year to hunt specific animals for that period. This approach was extremely successful. Whenever animals passed through, we were ready with the right tools at the right time. In other words, this enabled us to survive in extremely harsh climates. What can be certain about this time was that hunting wasn't just a game. It was a high-stakes pursuit and you had to get it right first time. The Mesolithic, or Middle Stone Age, began around 12,000 years BC, with a new abundance of life and forests and fruit and food that was brought about by the end of the last Ice Age. Animals abounded, such as the red deer and the roe deer, forest-dwelling creatures such as the mighty wild boar, and also the precursor to modern cattle, the huge and powerful and aggressive aurochs. It must also be remembered the abundance of fleshy fruits and sweetness that came with this period. Our response to this abundance was the microlith. These tiny stone tools can be configured very quickly in almost any way. In this way, no matter what we bumped into, we'd be prepared when we went out hunting and gathering. And these stone tools are extremely flexible. In this instance, they can be made into an arrowhead. With the aid of another Mesolithic innovation, the training of dogs, we could now greatly increase our chances of success by tracking animals such as this aurochs through the woodland. All we need to do is puncture it with an arrow and the dog will do the rest. From fish in the sea to birds in the sky, the Mesolithic toolkit saw us prepared. Around 7,000 years ago, the Neolithic, or New Stone Age, saw people increasingly settled living in permanent or semi-permanent houses and farming the land. Food was now primarily gained from crops and also domestic livestock. Bit by bit, the age of megalithic monument building was creeping upon us. And though we are fairly sure that some stone tools remained in use as tools, the increase in production, such as at the Langdale Axe Factory, saw a new focus on quantity and quality of the stone being used. At Langdale, a whole landscape was given over to the mass production of axes, the first industrial landscape. And what we see in the archaeology at this time is an increased selection in the type, quality and point of origin of many stone tools. Stone tools were no longer simply utilitarian objects. The more exotic, the better, and the more you had, the better. They were to be seen to have to show off as luxury objects. So, we've seen that uh, flint and stone tool technology is far from being clumsy or 
uh, or somehow um, uh, primitive, is, is a considered and sophisticated response to the environment around us. Um, the tools were always made with a goal in mind, and that goal directly shapes the tool. So when the environment was harsh, we had to get it right first time, the tools were focused. When the environment was lush, and we had no idea what we were going to bump into, the tools were a jack of all trades. And eventually, stone tools approached something of a luxury item in society. Exoticism became important. So um, stone tools, far from being boring, or far from being uh, inelegant, they are um, extremely fascinating. And though some people may roll their eyes when they think, oh, I found another stone tool, if you take a moment to consider that almost everything that we've ever done has been done using stone tool technology, 97% of our technology has been using geology, um, it's staggering. And therefore it's worthwhile respecting that and thinking, yes, yeah, stone tools are important. <laughs> And they also they reflect the vast majority of our intellectual output ever. So very impressive. So uh, that's been flint and or stone tool technology. Hopefully you found this video useful. Um, uh, if you have, feel free to comment below. If you um, haven't, feel free to comment below. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a question. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you uh, want to hear more from me, just subscribe to the channel and you won't be able to uh, but see um, my videos when they come up. And um, finally, we do now have a Facebook page. All you need to do is search for Archive Soup Productions on Facebook and click like. And uh, anything usually that I can't fit on these videos often finds its way onto that page. So, thank you very much.